Good morning. We're going to be speaking on the faith message. The faith message, if you're watching on World Ministries International television program, welcome. Those that are watching on social media, welcome. And those that are listening to our radio program, warning, welcome. We're in the college classroom at World Ministries International and speaking to the staff and their families. The faith message. I believe we need more faith in these, if we want to say, perilous times. We need more teaching on faith until we raise people to a level of receiving from God what Christ has died to provide for them. I hope, hope you caught it. Till we raise people to a level receiving from God what Christ has died to provide for them. Most people are not walking in the reality of what they could walk in. They don't possess what God has provided for them. So the faith message, I believe, is more important than ever before. It's more important even than the first century church that heavily walked in faith, especially the apostles. They walked with a great measure of grace. We, we've talked about that in the past. Grace and faith coincide. They go together like salt and pepper. Go together if you're cooking. But uh, today we've lost a great deal of what the first century church understood what they possessed. And it was just innate to them. It was automatic. It was like breathing. They walked with supernatural faith. We call it supernatural because today it's not natural. Today, people that walk in just great grace and great faith, we call radical. Yesterday, I had some guests for our television program, and we discussed this a little bit. What today is called radical was normal in the first century church. It was normal even in contemporary times until maybe the last 50 years. Now, some people still walk in what the Bible calls normal and what the rest calls supernatural. You know, Jesus walked in the supernatural, but it was normal for him. He walked by the will of God. He walked by faith. So the faith message of the 70s and 80s has been discarded by many as extreme or hyper. And to some extent, there was some heresy in some of it. You can't just name it and claim it if it's not within the will of God. Or you become your own little God. We pray according to the will of God and our prayers are answered. Pray according to your own selfish will and nothing happens. You got to make it happen yourself. Sometimes you can make it happen. Sometimes you can't. I'm talking about if you want to work twice as long to, to get something that you're naming and claiming. Because God's not going to give it to you. He likes to give you what is within his will. He doesn't like to give you what is in our selfish will, our selfish wants. Then we have to make it come to pass ourselves. But no longer is it genuine faith. Many others who actually learn the message of faith in the 70s, the 80s, I'm talking about contemporary times, have let it slip and gone back to walking by sight. There were some people that years ago had great faith, it seemed. And maybe you heard about them. And today they're walking more by sight than by faith. We have had such an effect on culture where culture has affected us and we haven't affected too much of the culture. Now that's just obvious because if you look at society, society has constantly gone more and more immoral. Now, how can that be if the church is alive? Well, it wouldn't be if the church is alive, but the church is not alive. You've heard me say, and I say it constantly, I believe the church is living in the era of Lot, like Sodom and Gomorrah and the plain cities. There was actually five cities that were destroyed for their lukewarmness, not just Sodom and Gomorrah. Five cities destroyed by brimstone. 
I wonder how many cities in the United States are going to be destroyed before we have a genuine revival. Because judgment is coming. I'm promising you it's escalating. Our cup of iniquity is getting higher and higher and our stench of our immorality is high in the nostrils of God and he's ready to pour vomit out, I believe, first on the church. First on the pathetic, lukewarm church that are a disgrace in the eyes of God. And the world thinks we're hypocrites. And to a great extent, we are. Someone... Someone may well say, well, you're in the faith camp. Again, to a degree I am. I believe in supernatural faith, but I don't believe in making my own faith. We, we gave an example last week of people that make their own Holy Spirit's gifts, like you are going to live when God never said you're going to live. And we gave an example of it, of a huge church, and everybody in it prophesied you're going to live. And the person who had been prog prog you know, diagnosed with incurable cancer. And the pastor took me in the back room and said, well, what do you believe? Because he respected me operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I said, that person's going to die. How can you say such a thing? Everybody prophesied they're going to live. And I said, boldly. Because they prophesy what they want to see, what they want to come to pass out of their own vanity and their pride, they have not heard from God. See, I had quite confidence I can hear from God. And the closer you get to God, you can have that confidence. When you hear from God, and you also know when other people don't hear from God, when they're just blowing what we call smoke. I see a lot of people blowing smoke. It's not God. They don't hear from God. They just talk. The more my sheep hear my voice, the more you know if God is speaking to you. Paul had a more profound revelation of redemption than any other New Testament writer. He especially understood the triune makeup of man and the connection between the heart and mouth. But what does it say? Well, if we want to look at Romans 8 through 10 of chapter 10, Romans 10, 8 through 10, says the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe with your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. But with a heart man believes unto righteousness and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. For with a heart man be believes unto righteousness. What is righteousness? It's the will of God. So with a heart we believe in righteousness or we believe in the will of God. Amen. You know, this to me is so elementary, but yet people don't believe in the will of God. They want their own will. You have Christians all over the place thinking it's okay to kill their baby. All over the place. There was, there was a poll taken and more Christians killed their babies in abortion than the heathen. Now, if that is an insanity, you tell me what is. That's because a cheap teaching on grace, that's not even the grace of the Bible. But gives you a license to sin. And you think I'm forgiven. Can you imagine more Christians are immoral, more Christians are murderers, more Christians violate the word of God than the pagan? Why are we going to church? And we talked about good shepherds versus bad shepherds. We talked about that not too many weeks ago. If you're under a bad shepherd, he leads you into sin. Because he doesn't deal with your sin. And so you continue in your vanity. He compromises the word of God. He compromises morality. He adapts to culture. And he calls himself pastor. And you're silly enough to follow this. If we want to say wolf in pastor's clothing or sheep's clothing. And you go further and further into your own vanity. And our churches are filled with vanity. People. Vanity. 
Dr. Mike and I discussed it a little bit yesterday. And I shared, I, th I think I could go into any church in America, any church, and cast demons out of some of their Christians, quote, who call themselves Christians. In fact, I know I could. I have done it time and time and time and time and time again. 2 Corinthians 4.13, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore we speak. Why were the apostles so bold? Because they believed in their heart and professed with their mouth the will of God. They had given up their will and they were living for the will of God. Now yesterday we were with a man. Ben Stairchuk, Vital Solutions and other ministries that he is, he is, he is very much like we are. In other words, he's very serious. He's very radical, which is to me normal. If, 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 you're, not, if you're not radical like I am, you're backslidden. See, that's where I'm at. If you're not radical, you're lukewarm. If you're not radical, what's wrong with you? It's just mental ascent. You're just listening to the words of God, but you don't follow them. You don't obey them. You don't move in the supernatural. I believe we should move in the supernatural. I believe we should move in the gifts of God. So this guy was pretty much like we are, and that's why we made a covenant with him, and we actually gave him a 40-foot container filled with dental equipment. So, because we believe in what he's doing, we believe he's a righteous man, because he has similar faith. You know, we have precious faith, the Bible says. They call them brethren, if you have precious faith together. So we have a covenant now with, with this ministry and this man, and I believe we'll do more things together. We've done already a fair amount of things in Africa with him. Uh, and we'll even do more. Since we have the same spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians 4.13. The same spirit of faith. Apostle Jesus operated in the faith revelation as Paul. In fact, Jesus himself taught it to Paul. Both Jesus and Paul operated from the spirit man. See, we're triune. Body, soul, and spirit. Soul, will, mind, and emotions. Body. Spirits live in the body. You know, and this is another thing. There's a, there's a teaching out there by some Christians that Christians can't have evil spirits in them. And that's, that's, so, that's so farce, so full of baloney. It's not even logical. If you can get sick in the body, then you can have spirits in the body. Now, if you're so glorified, you can't get sick either. I mean, it's just common sense. But we throw out common sense and we go on theology, according to de denominational opinion. But overseas, when I was a missionary, and I've lived there quite a bit over the, most of my life, I've either lived in countries or I've traveled to them constantly. You get people from all denominations and they finally realize it because they see the demonic, that Christians can have demons in them if they don't submit their will to God. If they open up their doors and windows, in other words, they continue to have bitterness, unforgiveness, stubbornness, all of these type of things. Rebellion. If they want to continue to kill their babies, you've got to cast out a spirit of murder many times or suicide. Because the devil will try to counterattack and kill them. They've killed their baby, now I kill you. You have women committing abortion all the time that kill themselves. There's a spirit involved in that. And we talked about this with Mike. Most Christians in America, they don't recognize spirits anymore. They, do, they know they're being beat up, torn up, filled with disease, committing suicide, full of depression. And they don't recognize many times spirits are behind it. So we ignore reality and we continue to take pills that will never cure you. Maybe they'll dope you up. Enough so you don't kill yourself, but they're not going to cure you. Amen. 
Both Jesus and Paul operated from the spirit man and not from the reason and sense realm. Christians in America operate from the reason and sense realm, the fivefold senses. The sixth sense or the spirit realm, the supernatural, real faith, you don't get a lot of Christians operating from that anymore. There are some, and we read about them and we say praise God and we let them teach at, at large conferences and we idolize them. Why aren't we all moving in the spirit realm? That's what God wants. That's what he commanded when he ascended, go and tarry until you receive my spirit so you can represent me on earth. He didn't say that for, you know, just a couple people. That is why, because Jesus and Paul operated from the spirit man, they operated from the sixth sense, so to speak, not the five full senses, that they saw apocalyptic miracles and apostolic miracles. Acts 3.16. We can read that. Acts 3.16. In his name, through faith, in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of all of you. Okay, the power of Christ. The power of Christ. Actually, the apostolic faith message seems Foolish. Now I say apostolic because the disciples turned into apostles they, and they taught this message through the epistles. But it seems foolish to the natural mind because the natural mind operates according to the five senses. So when you get into teaching on faith, half of the church doesn't believe in it. They don't believe in, in the spiritual gifts and operation today. Not half of the church. Just like half of the church doesn't believe in, in uh, demons. Just like half of the church they have no problems anymore if you want to commit abortion or be a homosexual. They have no problems. They'll ordain you. Half of the churches. The liberal mainline churches. That's why your politicians go to them. They have no problems with any of this. In fact, if you operate with a sixth sense, they'll attack you. You're a radical. You're a cuckoo. You're demon-possessed and all of this stuff. Isn't that something the demon-possessed calls another person demon-possessed? Yeah. Takes a demon to know, <laughs> to know what they don't know, huh? <laughs> That's why they, they classify us wrong. Takes a demon to lie. And that's why we have so many liars out there in the liberal movement. Because it's demonically inspired. The liberal movement is demonically inspired. And now I, I'm really getting to believe so is the democratic movement. Demonically influenced and inspired. Coming against everything that is moral and of God. And if you're watching on television and not promoting the Republican Party, I would call myself an independent. I'll vote for the best man and woman to represent the values of God. But I just recognize a party that is being more and more influenced by demonic forces. So I don't see how you can vote along those lines anymore if you call yourself a Christian unless you go to the liberal mainline churches. And I'm sure you have no problems with it. In fact, you're watching this and really you're upset with me. Well, that's the spirit inside of you. Go in Jesus' name. You know, I did that on television and somebody called up. When you did that, I was thrown against the wall. That's why I did it. I bet you a couple people have been thrown against the wall. Because there are people watching that have demons inside of them. And the more they watch this message, because this, I'm, I'm sort of speaking sort of real. There's a lot of people right now upset with me. Now there's others. You love me, amen? amen. Do you love me? Amen. You love me, Laura? <laughs> <laughs> you love me, Adalia? <laughs> I know my mom loves me. <laughs> but there are some people that don't. Because when we're speaking the truth, we're in a battle. We're in a battle these days. I've never seen America so divided between people that either love you or hate you. 
We are so divided because there's a spirit of God involved and there's other spirits fighting those that want to back the spirit of God's values and beliefs. I've never seen such division. I've never seen it in America like this. Sheer hatred, sheer insanity, demonic forces involved. But Paul and Jesus taught based on the sixth sense described in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is the assurance, meaning the confirmation, the deed, the title deed of things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. In other words, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Faith perceives it as a real fact. Going into Rwanda in genocide, after getting a clear word from God to go, and after fasting six weeks to overcome my, my flesh, my fear, my vanity, so I could operate in the will of God, then I had a clear fact based on what I believe was reality, the word of God, that God would get me in front of that president. And he did. I gave the word in Parliament of Rwanda. And as you know, they had seven weeks of repentance on a national scale, and the fighting stopped. It became a, a conviction of reality. I had to do my part. I had to fast. I had to pray. First, I had to hear from God. Once I knew his will, then I had to fast and pray so I could do his will. And that's what it takes sometimes. We need to fast and pray to overcome our weaknesses, sometimes to overcome demonic forces attacking us, to overcome our stubbornness, or we don't want to be corrected. You know, if you don't want to be corrected, it shows you got too much pride still left in you. Come on, let's just be honest. I still have pride. I'm still pretty vain. Big amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. This is an amazing statement. Faith perceives as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. I think it means the same as believing in the heart. That Paul teaches us about. It is a sixth sense of the spirit man, the sixth sense. It's not natural. According to this verse, faith can perceive a reality that the five senses cannot perceive because it is revelatory in nature. God reveals it to you. You know, as you wait on God, you get revelation. Amen. That's why some of us fast and pray. You get revelation as you wait on God. That's why people, you know, say, let me pray about it. Hopefully, they're really praying about it. And hopefully, then God will reveal his will to them. That revelation is the word of God to the individual that has received it. It therefore begins to speak it out of the abundance of the heart. We can simply say that walking by faith is walking by the sixth sense. Walking by faith is walking by the sixth sense or walking by the will of God. That's what walking in faith is. You're walking by the will of God. You're walking by the sixth sense of the heart independently of the five senses which have not yet perceived the re reality the heart of man has perceived from the Spirit of God. You know, Jericho, Joshua, the other five senses were against everything God told Joshua. Thank God he learned to walk by the sixth sense. He learned to really trust in the will of God. And the miracle happened. Because the five senses said, Joshua, you are crazy to do what you're doing. Nobody has done this and defeated the enemy. The five senses told Moses, don't, don't go to the, a dead end and the sea. There's no escape. The five senses told him, don't confront Pharaoh in Egypt. The five senses told Daniel, just close your doors and pray. See, the five senses are always against the will of God because the five senses are totally natural and logical. They're not supernatural. And God is the God of the supernatural. He doesn't go by the five senses. Abraham operated in this kind of faith when he refused to consider his own body now dead nor yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Abraham believed according to that which was spoken, not that which was perceived in the five sense realm. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm Abraham. I don't go what, what is perceived to be an old man. Amen? 
I can still give life. <laughs> Amen. We don't go by the five senses. Oh, you're too old. I don't think so. I feel pretty good. <laughs> Romans 4.12. We are told to walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. I'm trying. And Abraham believed in the heart and spoke with the mouth. <laughs> Paul said that Abraham called the things which was not as though they were. Wow. You know, that's why Abraham, I, such great faith, such great faith. I mean, he, he would have killed his son because he, could, he believed he could call in what God then told him to do. And there, there'd be life again. Abraham had that kind of trust in God. That whatever God did, there was for a reason. Even if God had to provide another son, Abraham trusted in the totality of God and God's will and the resurrection power. A lot of times we don't do that. If God said he was now Abraham, the father of a multitude, then Abraham was going to say it as well, even though he had no proof in the five sense realm. I'm a father of a multitude. Hey, I can, I can accept that. Amen. We're traveling the nations. I'm the father of a multitude. Now, they're all not going to be Hansons with my blood. That's for sure. <laughs> but spiritually, spiritually of a multitude. Because he walked in the sixth sense. The writer to Hebrews told us that the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. The apostolic faith message is clear all through the Bible. You know, the prophets, the apostles, you get into, into the Old Testament. You, you can call the pro, uh, prophets apostles. But you can see the same faith all through the entire Bible. You can see the sixth sense, the supernatural, all through the entire Bible. And it came to men and women that had that type of confidence in God. No matter what it was, they had trust in God. I mean, all of the martyrs had that kind of trust in God, even though they died. They had that kind of trust in God. There's a tomorrow. There's a supernatural. There's glory. There's rewards. They had that trust in God, and that's why they freely died. If you're watching on television, again, I hope you're enjoying this message, the faith message. We do need your help to stay on your local television station. Telephone 360-629-5248. Give us your very best donation. You could write to us too. You can give it online. We're trying to get 2,000 intercessors in every nation. You can see the email to write to. Again, may God richly, richly bless you. Help us as we get this faith message around the world. God bless you.